Hey everybody and welcome back to the Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. This is episode number 125. You'll notice Aaron doesn't have the pretty background. He's uh, he's out and away from San Jose, if you will. Aaron, you want to kind of chime people in? Sure. I am uh, visiting family on the East Coast, so I am actually coming live from an actual basement uh, out in Cape Cod, hence the background looking like I'm at the San Jose Arena, which I should have lied and said I was coming live from the SAP Center. But I'm not. I'm actually on the East Coast. All right. That's not bad. Okay. So uh, today, you know, opening a free agency and of course, nothing really happening for the Sharks. People poking and prodding, asking Doug Wilson to do something. Uh, <laughs> what am I talking about? It was immediately within an hour, we had uh, the first couple moves here. Uh, Andrew Cogliano, Nick Bonino gets signed. We uh, shore up a little bit of the goaltending with James Reimer. And we should actually even have some news about Martin Jones, which we'll touch on a little bit later on. But first, Aaron, um, I want to start off actually with Nick Bonino because it's hilarious. This is a guy that in the last episode that we had, we were talking about, uh, you know, the guys that will potentially be uh, a 3C for the Sharks, somebody who the Sharks should be looking at. And, you know, right after we were done with that segment, I said, you know, we did all the work for you already, Doug Wilson. It's going to be either Casey Sezikis or Nick Bonino. <laughs> Guess he made his choice. What do you think? Yeah, I think Zekas was going to get a little little pricey. I think he was going to be the more popular option with other teams. And at that point, he's going to have his choice of where he wants to go. And I don't think he would want to go to a possibly non-contender team versus a team that's going to be a lot deeper and, and really wanting to help uh, on their PK. So I think uh, Cogliano and Benino are both pretty solid signings. Um, I think Doug Wilson mentioned that he wanted both of these guys for a long time. Oddly enough, because Benino was drafted by the Sharks uh, originally in 2007. He was a six-round pick, but he was traded away. So um, he had stints in, let's see, he was in Anaheim, then Vancouver, then Pittsburgh, which he played against the Sharks and won a cup, and then uh, Nashville and Minnesota. So he, uh, he's, he's been around the league and been around the block, but uh, a good guy that uh, apparently both these guys are very good locker room guys to help the culture in San Jose. So look for more of that um, buzzword, if you will, of culture being changed in the locker room again. Nice. And uh, I'll have you move your mic just a little bit closer. But uh, for Bonino, I'm wondering um, if you can just kind of maybe go over some of the things that we had already said in that, that last episode, just for the folks that are uh, kind of, you know, looking to, for, to get some information on who that is and maybe didn't see the last show. What were the reasons that we really wanted this guy? I remember, you know, face-offs being a big one. Um, and of course, his ability to be that third line center, take the pressure off of Logan and hurdle for those defensive zone stars. But uh, what else about Nick Bonino really kind of stands out? And, and this is the reason why we wanted this guy. Yeah, absolutely. He's uh, like I said, he's a locker room guy. So he's going to change, help change the culture in the, in, in the sharks on the sharks team. But uh, that third line center is going to take a lot of the defensive responsibilities away from our top line guys. So hurdle and Couture aren't going to be, probably won't be on the PK as much, maybe not even at all, depending on the situation. Um, that will leave their legs fresher, uh, so they will have more, I, I guess, fresh legs for the rest of the game and also the power play time to, to kind of take the burden of scoring off of that third and fourth lines. Um, now, he can score. I think he's going to chip in more than uh, Dylan Gambrell ever did or probably ever will. So I think Gambrell in the fourth line is a better role for him, at least at this stage in his early career. Um, I think he could potentially be a third line center once he kind of gets that scoring touch up a little bit more. But I think um, Benino is going to be there. He's going to help with that third line center. Um, I think he's going to he kind of brings a little bit of speed. He's a good skater. So I think um, I think it's it's a good this is exactly what I think Doug Wilson was talking about, where he wanted to get that third line center um, taken up. And, and this is the guy that he got probably one of the top guys that he was targeting, one of the top guys that we were targeting or we were hoping they were going to target, too. And you know what's funny? I'm looking at this sportsforecaster.com. So if you guys want to check that out, go right ahead. But I'm looking at the stats here for, for Nick Bonino. And every time he goes to a new team, his points per game kind of dips. But then as he stays with that team, it jumps back up. I mean, and he's always around almost half of a point per game um, in, in all of these ones. So like in Anaheim, he was, you know, a 0.36, then a 0.48, then a 0.64 point per game. Then he gets... Uh, moved over to Vancouver and it drops from six four to five two, and he goes to Pittsburgh. It drops to four six. He stays at four six, right? Moves to Nashville, drops to point three five. But then with Nashville, it was point four three, point five two, right? And then with Minnesota, point four seven. He's always around about a half a point per game, 
But when he gets moved somewhere, he dips a little bit, which is understandable. He's got new teammates and new systems and everything else. So um, expect that he's going to get probably somewhere in the uh, just under 0.47 points per game uh, for the Sharks this season, hopefully. And if he happens to stick with us uh, beyond that, then uh, by the trend here, it seems like he's going to be uh, pushing right back towards that half point per game. He's consistent. He is consistently about a half a point per game type of guy. And that's exactly what you're kind of looking for out of that third line center. That little bit of offensive punch. He's got the face offs. He's got good two way defensive responsibility. Uh, and, and like you said, he's a locker room guy. He's going to be good for the youngsters. And, you know, I saw a lot of stuff on Twitter, um, mainly from one guy in particular who, you know, he just has to kind of be the pessimist, right? Is this team an Andrew Cogliano and a Nick Benino away from winning a Stanley Cup? Well, no, not necessarily. But, you know, there's intangibles. And this is one of those intangibles, like you were saying about the locker room. They want to have a stronger culture, bringing guys that are well-respected, well-liked, and are good locker room guys. And that's how you kind of get those younger guys to think and act that same way by example. And so I think bringing these guys in, it's going to help on the ice, but I think it also helps off the ice as well. So I, I can understand where someone might be critical of these moves saying, this isn't going to help us win a Stanley Cup. Um, I think we're much farther away than, than these three players anyway. So I don't think it matters who you brought in. Um, you, we're probably not competing right away anyway. Uh, but, but this is kind of how you get the younger guys in the organization uh, to kind of get that feeling for being that type of locker room guy for being, uh, being able to gel well with your teammates, being the guy that everybody looks up to and, and likes, you know, Mario Ferraro is, is that guy already, but you know, some of these other younger guys can kind of uh, take some pointers from the older guys, the veterans that come in who have already kind of got that under their belt. So uh, that's Nick Benino. Now uh, a guy that we did not talk about. And because mainly we weren't talking about third line centers, uh, was Andrew Cogliano. Now, Andrew Cogliano was a great two-way guy. He's probably going to be spending most of his time uh, in the bottom six. I could see him jumping into the third line, uh, maybe just sticking around on the fourth line. But again, a guy that's a very hard worker. Um, you know, he's been in the league for a long time, a veteran. What are the things that you know about Andrew Cogliano that you can tell uh, our fan base to be excited about? Well, first, can you hear me? Because I just had to switch much better. I can hear you, yes. <laughs> okay, good. Um uh, Cogliano, I think he's, I could see this guy bouncing between, I think the third and fourth line. Um, I mean, just, just bringing these two guys in, you kind of look at the sharks, uh, the bottom six is these guys aren't going to be in the top six, but the bottom six is a little bit more solidified. Um, the penalty kills a little bit more solidified with both these guys. And I think, um, I, I, I feel like the depth is better. Like we know the sharks players behind these guys that already got ice time last year and they couldn't cut it. Doug Wilson even said as much as we were asking, basically asking boys to do a man's job and we're going to go out and get some men to do this job because they're the kids just aren't ready yet. So I think last year was kind of a throwaway year. I think they knew it was going to be a throwaway year. And I think that's why everyone that was upset that Doug has not been fired is because I think, I think uh, Hassel Plattner also knew that this is a throwaway year or last year, not this upcoming year. Um, they had their first round draft pick. They're going to stock the cupboards. They weren't going to trade away most any of those picks. Um, they did get Aiden Hill by trading away next year's second round draft pick. So I think um, the prospects look very good. I think going back to our last show, I think that was a steal what they got for um, for uh, William Eklund. I think he's going to be a stud. Um, I don't know if he'll play this year. Interesting, though. Did you see that he plays in the Swedish elite League, is that what it is? SEL? SHL. SHL. Um, they have a clause. If you're a first round pick, you're allowed to get out of your contract and go play in the NHL. So if the Sharks wanted him in the lineup, he could play next year, even though he's signed to play in the SHL. He has a clause to get out of it. So um, the KHL did not sign that. So any of those first rounders that were, were uh, drafted that were in the KHL wouldn't be able to do it. But um, just an interesting little fact there. So Eklund could possibly make the lineup. Do I think he should? I don't know. I, I think I'll a training you... camp and the prospect camp is going to tell us where he is. Yeah. I mean, obviously it, it all really depends on how he does in those camps there. But, um, you know, one thing that some people forget is the SHL is international ice, right? So the dimensions are different. I think it would be good just like for Melnichuk, right? Uh, I think it would be good for, uh, them to get that experience, on North American ice, but not necessarily in the NHL. So give them an opportunity to play um, with with the smaller rink 
if you will, and to kind of get those dimensions down uh, so that they feel a lot more comfortable before they jump into the NHL. Um, I think he's absolutely ready uh, by all accounts from everything that I've seen read. Uh, he seems like he's ready, but it'll, I think it's just going to throw him off if he jumps right in on a much smaller rank and he's got a lot less space, uh, time and space, really. So um, I don't know. We'll see how that goes. I'm very interested in seeing how the camp goes, uh, both development, training, and everything else. And then we'll see him probably in preseason, I'm sure. So um, hey, that'll all be you know really interesting to, to keep an eye on. And I, I don't know. If, if he makes this roster... Uh, do you, do you throw him on the second line? I guess. I mean, who knows? I mean, I guess it just depends on how well he's doing. Yeah. It depends on how bad LeBanc is doing too, I guess. <laughs> he's got the fill in for him. But, uh, remember last year, who was the surprise of last year's team or, or the surprise that made last year's team? Kanijov. Okay. Yeah. Who was the surprise the year before that? Ferraro. Oh yeah. Ferraro. Who's going to be the surprise this year? There's probably going to be one guy, one or two guys that we're going to, surprise the team and and make them not send them down because their play is too good and ready for the nhl i'm not saying it's gonna be eklund i'm just saying there could be somebody that we don't know that could fill in that maybe gambrell's out at that fourth line c who knows you know someone could step in there and, and take over someone yeah. might have taken some big strides over the summer i want to poke on some of these comments real fast and actually maybe i should save this one but it says which transaction are you boys most excited about? So uh, that's from Dan to win. Um, is there b between these two, I guess, unless you're counting, I don't know the, 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 the AHL signings that we also did, but um, I mean, between Cogliano and Benino uh, and then of course, James Reimer, who we haven't talked about yet, which, which of these are you most excited about? I think Benino actually, I think Benino over Cogliano and Reimer. Reimer to me, um, I don't think he's going to get as much playing time as Aiden Hill. I think he's going to get, he's going to be the majority of the starters. I don't think it's going to be quite 50, 50, maybe more like 60, 40. Cause I don't think Aiden Hill's ready for a huge workload. Not like how Martin Jones was years ago when he right. took over and had 60 plus games. I don't think you see that much in the NHL anymore. There's only a handful of goalies. I don't think Hill's ready for that. So, um, I'm not as excited about Reimer. Um, I'm not saying I don't like him. I do. I'm glad that they got him. And I think it's a pretty solid one, two punch there in goal. Um, Cogliano to me is a, is a good depth player, not depth. Like he's not going to be in the lineup, but a good, good third on a good team. He'd be a great fourth liner on a, on a really good team. I he shouldn't be on the third line, but he probably will be on the sharks. I'm more, I'm more excited about the Benino, um, partially because of the locker room stuff. He's going to be a good mentor probably for Gambrell right there to take over that role in two years. Um, cause he signed for two years, but, um, I think he's, he brings a little bit more professionalism and a little bit more skill. Uh, even though he's a little older now, he's not that old. And he also signed a pretty decent contract. It's only two years at 4.1. So, um, I think, uh, it's tradable as well. If things go South, both those guys, like Cogliano is only on one year. Yeah. Um, they're tradable at the trade deadline if, if things just end up terrible. Well, I think Travis McLean was answering that question. He says Reimer. So I'm thinking uh, maybe he's <laughs> he's pumped up about uh, getting Reimer in the nets there. You know, I'm with you. I think he's probably going to play back up to Aiden Hill. Uh, he's 33 years old. This past season, he had a 906 save percentage and a 2.66 goals against average. So um, good numbers, good enough numbers um, for the San Jose Sharks. You know, again, if Aiden Hill kind of goes downhill, I think – downhill um i think reimer's a guy that uh can absolutely Terrible. step in uh for a stretch of games until he'll gets his game back so um I i'm excited about both these guys i love the tandem that they picked up uh this offseason here uh and, i mean you've got a guy for the future and you've got a guy that's on his second stint with the san jose sharks he was with us back in uh 2015 2016 briefly uh didn't play too many games but i was always impressed with his play so um i i think james reimer is a, is a great veteran to bring in um, to, to kind of help uh, Hill along the way here. So uh, I'm excited about him as well. I'm with you, though. I think the guy I'm most excited about is Bonino, mostly because, A, we picked him, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and B, because I feel like the 3C is kind of like the biggest uh, gaping hole uh, for the Sharks in terms of you know not having Hurdle and Couture on the ice, working hard every single time in the defensive zone. I think he's going to help out, uh, give them the starts, more offensive zone starts, and I think that's really going to help uh, the engine for this team. Speaking of engines, Travis also saying Cogliano has a great engine uh, and he never gets hurt. So he, it seems like he's very durable, which is another good thing. We always had uh, that, that I guess, compliment 
about uh, Patrick Marlowe. He's always in the lineup. That's what you get out of him. Uh, he's 41 years old, but you always get uh, the games played. So the guy doesn't miss much. And apparently uh, Cogliano is uh, about the same way here, according to Travis McLean. There you go. Go ahead, Aaron. What you got? Uh, I'm just reading the comments here. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, people are happy. I get the feeling a little bank trade will happen. Doug is not done yet from Timo time. Speaking of Timo, do you think Timo is going to get dealt? There are some rumors going around. Did you see that? I think we talked about that last show. Yeah, a little bit. Go ahead. Uh, there was a rumor that Timo Meyer is going to send to uh, to New Jersey for Jersey. Fisher, which just did not make sense because those two are going to want to play together, both being Swiss. So um, there are some rumors. Plus, it, on top of that, I think Kurz was talking about a minor trade or there was a trade dealing with someone on the East Coast. I think even uh, Shang Pen had mentioned it. So people were like, trying to piece it together and, and come up with this giant blockbuster trade. But uh, it ended up being a very minor trade of, um, I can't even remember the names now. <laughs> Yor Yoros? Is it Yoros? Yoros. Yeah. Yoros, Yoros and Nick Merkley. Yeah, that's right. Yaros got sent to New Jersey for Nick Merkley, who the Sharks just signed today. Yes. Um, people were kind of people were kind of like going, well, why didn't they qualify him? Like he's going to be a free agent, but it was cheaper to let him be a free agent, sign him than it was to, um, to, to uh, qualify him and then go to, to arbitration. So um, good for the sharks to save probably a couple hundred thousand dollars there. I want to take this opportunity really fast uh, to let people know uh, he's got it on the screen here. It says tip us on Venmo. If you'd like to support the show, uh, please feel free. You could do that through Venmo at the fin factor, all 100% of uh, whatever you'd like to support us with would actually go to us. However, there is also a uh, super chat, apparently super stickers. I'm not sure what that's all about. Uh, and then what was the other one? Super thanks, I think. Super so thanks. Yeah, super thanks. Apparently this is new. I guess more, a higher percentage, and people must have heard you guys talking. Uh, the, a higher percentage of your support goes to the actually content creators. So um, if you'd like to do that, you certainly can. We would absolutely appreciate it. The nice thing about super thanks is that you don't even have to be in the live. So if you're watching a replay of this, please feel free. If you want to uh, go ahead and support the show, we do appreciate that. Also remember the finfactor.com has this shirt right here, that hat right there. I think Aaron, do we still have the black ones? We do, but this is actually the OG shirt. This is mm. before we even bought those ones that Paul's wearing right now. This is like our test run of shirts. Um, so you can see the logo is even smaller on this one than it is on Paul's. <laughs> So we got the better version of that on the store. If you like black instead, feel free. Go ahead. Okay, so um, let's see. We'll go through some of these other comments here. Actually, you know what I want to do? I want to talk a little bit about Martin Jones. I see Jeremy actually has a comment here. I was defending Martin Jones for the longest, and three years was long enough to fix your game. You know I, what? I three know, years man. was also think... long enough for the Sharks to fix their defense, and we couldn't seem to do that. So um, <laughs> who knows? Uh, but you know what? Martin Jones, he signed in Philadelphia. Now, this is the really funny part. He signed for two million dollars a year. Um, Aaron, was it a one-year or two-year contract? I can't remember just now. A, just a one-year deal for two million dollars. So it's not one-year deal, two million. I'm shocked Philly paid him that much, to be honest, because he just got bought out. He's got that money guaranteed. Usually, when you get bought out, you can just sign for a league minimum, and it's well, not a problem. But to me, that means there was some value there, mm -hmm. and team saw it. And yep. there must have been multiple bidders, and this was the highest bidder that got it. And that's what was going to be needed to be get done. And super producer Jason had a very good comment. We talked about this earlier is he has a very good agent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, honestly, uh, there's a couple of reasons. Um, in Philly, he's got the goaltending coach that he had with the LA Kings and, or not with the LA Kings. Um, uh, what he knows that goaltending coach, wherever he, the guy came from, it was from and the Kings. It was from the Kings. Okay. Yeah. So he knows that goaltending coach and that was the guy that kind of got his game up and rolling uh, in the first place. So that was a huge part of the decision to go to Philly was that he could reunite with that guy. He knows his game. He knows how to fix his game. Uh, he, they work well together, that whole thing. So there's a dynamic there uh, in Philadelphia. And that was a big factor as to why he went. So, um, you know, and the other thing is he's playing behind Carter Hart, a guy who he says, you know, I love watching his game. I feel like we can teach each other a few things. Some Sharks fans might disagree with that sentiment. <laughs> Maybe Carter Hart is the only one doing the teaching here. I don't know. But um, I think, you know, again, for me, it's a good move for Martin Jones, and I hope that he does well in Philadelphia. I, I think uh -huh. this is one of those things where he needed a change of scenery, number one. Number two, he gets money from the Sharks as it is. And number three, he's getting paid more than league minimum from Philly as well. So this is all good for Martin Jones 
uh, in my eyes. And again, I, I really do hope that he's able to turn his game around. He's a nice guy, a great dude. Um, he just had a hard time here in San Jose finding his game. And I think that's exactly what the change of scenery is going to do for him out in Philadelphia. Yeah, we talked about this last week, and I said that Martin Jones is going to be a good backup on a team. So him going into uh, Carter Hart, I think he even said him mentoring a younger goalie. So this, is, this is, came down to exactly what I had said last week. Um, Carter Hart had a disastrous season last year. I only know this because I have him on my fantasy team, and I ended up dropping him because he was pissing me off so much. He was <laughs> terrible. And uh, he is kind of like he's 22, 23 years old. He's one of those young goalies, hot prospect, drafted very high. This is exactly why I didn't want the Sharks to draft Wallstad, because you never know with goalies, like things could just go wrong real quick. And this is exactly what happened to Carter Hart. So bringing in Martin Jones to kind of help mentor him, get him back. Plus, Martin Jones, I think, plays well when he has a good goalie. And Carter Hart is a good goalie um, when he kind of challenges and and tries to get that playing time kind of. So I think, um, I think it's a good situation for Martin. I think it's a fantastic deal for him and his agent to get $2 million. Um, but I do think that he was going to still be in the league. I didn't think there was going to be nobody wanting to get him compared to look at Braden Holtby. I don't think he signed yet. Right. He was also bought out by Vancouver. Um, yeah. and according to, uh, was it Shang? I think Shang had mentioned, you know, through his connections to scouts that pretty much, uh, Martin Jones is the only one that was uh, other of the people that were bought out. Martin Jones most likely will still be in the league. The other ones probably would not be. So I don't see Braden Holtby unless he signs probably a super cheap deal, especially now that the chips are kind of falling and people are kind of grabbing their goalies now because some teams needed him. Um, I, I just, I'm happy for Martin Jones. I like the guy. I just, uh, we've been big defenders of him uh for also for a couple years so i'm glad that uh to get to see him uh still in the league continue playing because uh i hope the sharks play against them a couple times this year jl103 saying this free agency was trying to manufacture goals from the third and the fourth lines who on the cuda will step up this year aaron do you think that there's anyone from the CUDA that's going to, to step in? Or do you think the Sharks have made enough signings that they're not going to be backfilling that revolving door that we've talked about in seasons past, uh, bringing guys up and in? I kind of feel like there's enough forwards now uh, that we're not going to see as much of a revolving door as we have. Maybe one position kind of changing a guy in and out. But um, I don't know. I feel like the Lions kind of, we, we've got the players um, to, to fill out the roster now. What do you think? Well, I think it might be some of the guys that have, we've already seen maybe taking that next steps. Like Noah Gregor's going to be in the lineup. Bear Bonoff, I'm excited to see what he's going to do for a full season, not just that short kind of two-week span where he was playing so well. Uh, Rudolph Balsers is another guy that started to kind of pick up things towards the end of the season. Um, excited to see what he could do for a whole season. Um, and again, we talked about this before. The difference between a good player and a very good player is consistency. If Bear Bonoff was almost the point Per game, I think towards the end of the season, if I'm not expecting him to be an 80 point player, but if we can get 50 to 60 points out of that guy, that would be amazing. And that would be kind of a steal of a, of a trade with uh, Toronto last year. Um, the other one is, is uh, Dolan. He's going to be coming across the pond and he signed a one way deal. So he's not going to be going to the Barracuda. He's going to be in the lineup. Um, I'm interested to see what he does. And again, I'm not expecting 60 70 points out of the guy but if he could put up 40 maybe even 50 points um that could be the surprise of the year you know so just a combination of those kind of guys that we pretty much already know about i don't know if so much that there's someone that's hidden on the barracuda that we don't know at this point because there was such a rotation last the last two seasons um we pretty much know most of these guys the only other big surprise could be some of the guys that were drafted last season and also this season um, if the Sharks are going into the playoffs and their college season ends, they are eligible to join, kind of like Kyle Kale McCarr did against the Sharks when the Sharks played against uh, Colorado a couple years ago. Um, they can join in the playoffs as soon as their their um, their college season is done, and we have a number of those players that are in college. One of them is, um, I think, kind of one of the top prospects, other than other than uh, Eklund, is uh, Bordalo, who. Has he? I think he's playing in Michigan, isn't he? Is he still yeah. playing there? And he's playing with was it uh, was it four of the top ten guys or something that were drafted this year play at Michigan, and they're all going back. 
Yeah, it's Powers and Veneers. And yeah, and, and you know, the other thing, I just saw some highlights. He was on Team USA. He scored a goal. Yeah, I, I like there's a guy right there that could totally, at the end of this season, he finishes college and he's going to be like, I'm going to turn pro. And the Sharks are, maybe they're making that push for the final final last week of the season and they need some help offensively. And he steps in and, and is able to join and, and flawlessly go in there. So to me, I think that would be a cool surprise seeing Bortolo come in. Yeah, I see it. <laughs> yeah there you go jl103 bordelo hype train even though you butchered his name that's fine <laughs> not everyone knows french it's cool uh we've got a correction here it seems uh holpy went to dallas thank you nick and lvl uh letting us know about holpy again this is a shark show we don't know uh, <laughs> you know what's funny uh one of the guys that we play with uh casey his name is uh, looks a lot like uh, Braden Holpe, so he was hoping that the Sharks would pick him up. He could get a Holpe jersey and then walk around, and people would think it was him. Uh, also, you know, interesting news here. Uh, Jeremy saying Dell is a saber now. Uh, Nick also saying uh, Dell's a saber, and rest in peace, Dell, because he's on the sabers. That's rude, Nick. As true as it is, it's still hey, rude. I'd rather be on Buffalo right now than on Arizona. Arizona is doing a fire sale like crazy, more so than <laughs> Buffalo. Okay. It's unreal how much they've gutted that team. <laughs> how many con I've never seen. I've never seen a trade where nothing goes back the other way. And they've had four of them this season. Yeah, it, it's it's crazy. They have like what? Eight second rounders next year. It's not even future considerations. It's just right. here. <laughs> yeah, it's not. Usually it's future considerations like, oh, maybe if one of those guys ends up getting 40 points, will you give us a draft pick? No, it's just like, nope, nope. Just take it. Here's a second round draft pick and a terrible contract. Have at it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hey, uh, okay. okay. I think let's, we let's, uh, we touched on. a little bit. Oh, go ahead. Hold on. Let's, let's talk about this. Let's get into yeah. this topic. There are a lot of Sharks fans that wanted exactly what Arizona is doing right now. I'm not. <laughs> you're laughing because you know. You know. There, there's I, I saw so many comments on both Reddit and Twitter of people saying this is how a teardown is. I don't know why the Sharks are doing this. Fire Doug Wilson. It's like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Would you what? What do you expect is going to happen? I mean, Arizona doesn't pull fans anyway. Can you imagine the Sharks doing that? Nobody would go to games. Ticket sales would plummet. They would be terrible. They would probably leave town because their lease is up in three years, right? 2025, I think, four years, three, four years. Okay. So uh, the Sharks can't do that. And and Becker went on and said as much, saying we can't do a full teardown rebuild because we need to sell seats. I think that's what he said, something like that. He basically said we needed to sell tickets. We have we have season tickets to sell. He said he'd have a hard time selling um the season tickets or, or, you know, selling to somebody who has got like season tickets for three years or whatever it is like a three year packet. I don't know if they do that, but um, it, if they were to do a full rebuild, you know, so um, I, I didn't, I wasn't sure if he meant selling as in actually like monetarily selling or if like selling as in convincing people to want to come to games. What's the difference? It's still well, no, selling. exactly. There's no difference there really. So yeah, you're absolutely right. But um, yeah, I, I just, I, I I don't see this team doing a full blown rebuild. Um, number one, it's hard enough to move those contracts. Um, and just number two, you've never heard Doug Wilson say, I want to do a full rebuild. You've never heard him say, I'm ready to tear everything down. He doesn't want to do that. He never wants to do that. So he's always going to take what he's got and make tweaks to it. We're always going to do resets and, and that kind of thing. We're never going to tear this whole thing down. If you want that, the whole fire Doug Wilson mob is going to needs to get what they want in order for that to happen. As long as Doug Wilson's GM, his whole priority is try to make Hasso uh, Platner happy. Uh, make sure that he understands the, the course of the team and he's on board with it. And then he'll proceed with that. You want me to continue trying to make the team, um, you know, competitive with just with what we have and then adding pieces around it. That's what I'll do. Right. And it seems like that's the case. It seems like he, that's, that's the kind of the MO is, stay at least somewhat competitive, um, you know, try to make playoffs, push to make playoffs. We'll make moves. We could spend to the cap. He's never had a problem not spending to the cap. So, I mean, I don't know. I think he's a good owner and everything. I just think that if you're going to want to have a full blown rebuild, it's not going to happen under the watch of Doug Wilson. So as long as he's there, don't be surprised that you're going to get more resets. And I see, I understand a lot of people getting upset about that because 
well, you know, Doug Wilson's been at the reins for such a long time. We haven't won a cup yet. Guys, there's so many teams that either have not won a cup yet or haven't won a cup in a very long stretch of time. Like not everybody can win. The guy. It's not like going to the store and buying a head of lettuce. You can't just get it. It's Toronto. not how it works. Toronto. It's a competition for a reason, right? And uh, there's there are some teams that go through this where they, they're absolutely terrible. They get high draft picks, and they come back with those high draft picks after they've developed, and they win. And the Sharks haven't had that luxury because we haven't been very, very bad for a long time. Finally, we have been, uh, and hopefully these these picks you know kind of pan out. Bordalo and Eklund, uh, if they come into the league and they you know stir things up, Gosh, how great would that be for the Sharks for the next decade, right? Uh, but you kind of have to sink a little bit to get there. The Sharks have not sunk anywhere near as far as some of these other teams. You look at guys like, or teams like Buffalo, uh, Arizona now, um, teams like Detroit. They've gone through some really bad times. Even Chicago, after Chicago won, and they paid all of their veterans tons and tons of money, same thing happened with them. They've been a really bad team, right? So, I don't know. I, I think I, it's it's nice the, to have that idea that oh we should just tank nobody ever goes into a season as a professional and thinks you know what i want to do i want to just tank to give some 18 year old an opportunity to play well in like three years there, that's not the idea nobody wants to do that and frankly as fans i wouldn't want that anyway i always want to see my team go out there and just play as hard as you can uh and, and do as well as you can if that means you don't make playoffs well that that sucks and hopefully retool and, and get the team back and do a better spot next season and I think that's what we are where we're at right now. And I'm with you. I think the last season, even the season before, was not necessarily a throwaway season, but I think they knew we're not going to be very competitive. We're going to do the best we can. Um, we're going to push these guys to want to try to make playoffs here. But if it doesn't work out, gosh, that's kind of how we saw things coming already. But you know what? Maybe we'll get a high draft pick. And they did. And for everybody who's like, well, they need to suck, they need to tank to get that pick. They finally did. So, I mean, oh, this is it. So if you're upset about that, I don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> you can't have it every single way that you want it. But um, I don't know. I, I think, again, the Sharks are, are in a good spot right now uh, with their young guys, Bordalo and Eklund and even Ryan Merkley. And uh, hopefully that bodes well for the years to come. I don't know. Well, people people complain they want to rebuild and they want the Sharks to tank. And it's like, have you seen that meme? Show me your tanking without, <laughs> telling, without showing me your tanking, right? Okay. Last two seasons, the Sharks tanked. I think two seasons ago they weren't expecting to. It just kind of happened. I think last season, I don't that's and when I say tank and when I say it was a throwaway season, yeah. that's as bad as a tank or throwaway season as you will probably ever see in San Jose. They're not they were competitive. I still think they were hopeful to make the playoffs. I think they wanted to see where their young guys were, kind of give an evaluation of where they were as a franchise with their prospects, and they were terrible. And I think they kind of opened their eyes up to be like, wow, we really need these guys aren't going to do it. Hence, Wilson going out and getting Cogliano and Benino um, and making some moves. And I don't think that I don't think this is the roster yet either. I think there might be another one coming. So um, I I don't know. I, I'm I'm not upset about it. Yeah. I think it was still entertaining to watch. I mean, not every night, but it's not Buffalo. It's not what Arizona abomination is going to be and it's too bad they're not in the pacific division anymore they got bumped to central to make room for seattle um and there uh nick nick uh um helped me out here he said arizona has two first rounds and five second rounds next season that's a lot of picks that's they're not going to make all those picks but it's also a lot oh they probably will because they've gotten rid of so many players um I think that's, but that's still, those guys are going to be three, four years away from getting to the NHL. Maybe two to three at the earliest. They're not going to be guys that are going to be jumping in right away. And um, Jumbo's Rooster, great name. The Sabres tandem is Craig Anderson and Aaron Dell. They really want Shane Wright. However, they won't be able to draft Shane Wright. Did you know this? Hmm. They changed the rules. If you're first overall, you can't be first overall for another five years. And Buffalo is just first overall again. Right. So they will not be able to, I mean, they'll go in the lottery. They'll still tank, but at best they're going to be second overall. They won't be able to first, which I think is great because I think it's ridiculous. They have how many first overall picks do they have right now in their system? They have Jack Eichel still, or was he second? Is he second overall to, second. Uh, he was second. McDavid. Still. Yeah. In any other year, there was no McDavid. He was, he was going to be a first overall. And then you have Darlene, right? Their defenseman, 
Rasmus Dahlin a couple mm -hmm. years ago, and then they just got Owen Powers. Like, come on, man. You're, you're going to be like Edmonton and just <laughs> perpetually <laughs> suck and try and get that first round pick or first overall pick. Okay, so I want to go back then because you wanted to go on on the rant earlier. You said, let's talk about this. So I, I'm going to go back to what I was going to say um, before we jump backwards. Um, you, you thought that maybe the Sharks aren't done yet. Uh, Sheng Peng also thought the same thing on Twitter. He was saying, I don't think the Sharks are done yet. And somebody actually uh, in the comments here had said, I don't think that they're done yet either. I can't find it right now. Maybe Superdue just can find it and throw it back up there for me. But um, essentially... Yeah, there it is. Thank you. I get the feeling a LeBanc trade will happen. Doug is not done yet. I don't know if it's a LeBanc trade necessarily, but do you get the sense that maybe the Sharks are looking to shake up a little bit in the top six at all? Absolutely. I think LeBanc we... and Meyer are on thin ice right now. I think uh, if there's any suitors out there, I think they're going to be gone. I think Timo Meyer's stock kind of went up after that uh, tournament because he was playing for Switzerland was scoring some pretty decent goals. So I think his confidence also, even if he doesn't get traded, I think his confidence kind of went up a little bit. Um, I think they're going to need to make space for some of those up and coming guys. I think um, Dolan possibly could get in that top six, maybe on the second line. You know, they have Barabanov who's showing hope. There's, there's Balsers that showed hope. So um, to me, I think Kevin LeBanc has kind of run his course, kind of like how Ryan Donato wasn't, wasn't qualified or signed and he's a free agent. Mm -hmm. I think um, kind of a similar situation, the coach Bugner, and I think any coach probably wouldn't be liking how LeBanc has been dogging it on some shifts. So uh, you need to, you need to be there on every shift every night in the NHL or you're, you're going to get packing unless you're some superstar that is hurt. Like there's no excuses for it. So LeBanc is neither of those. Um, so I think um, I think they're going to try and, and trade him for something, maybe bring in another top six guy, top six right winger. I think that's kind of what they need. Um, if can you imagine if the Sharks were able to trade one or both of, let's say, Shimmick and LeBanc or Timo Meyer, that clears up some decent cap space and you can bring in a pretty high scoring winger either via trade I don't know who's on the free agency list or who's left right now, but I think um, I think that makes the team look a whole lot different. Yeah, no, I agree with you, and I love that. I love the idea of packaging Shimmick. We've talked about this before. There's nothing wrong with the guy. I like the guy. He gets injured, yes, uh, but by all accounts, when he's healthy, he's a good defensive defenseman. He throws the body around. Uh, he's smart out there. So, um, you know, this it's is a guy that maybe a team takes a chance on, rolls the dice a little bit in terms of his health. Um, and again, he's making 2.25 or something, I think. So to get him off the books along with a guy like Kevin LeBanc or a Timo Meyer, those are two quality players that you'd be sending one direction. Uh, and, and I think you'd get the return on it would be uh, pretty decent. So yeah, hopefully, um, that would be the case if you were to, to package those two up and get just that much better of a scoring winger for the top six. I think the Sharks get that and we're looking like a much better team, uh, almost immediately. Um, you know, getting guys that like like Benino and Cogliano to shore up kind of that bottom six, I think is huge. But I still think that there's just a, a hole. There's a bit of a hole, specifically, like you said, right wing. Uh, there's a bit of a hole there that I think the Sharks fill that. We're going to look a whole heck of a lot better. Kelly making an interesting observation here. She says she thinks the bank is out of place uh, without Jumbo. Uh, <laughs> it, it wouldn't be the first time. Uh, the, the Jumbo Joe Thornton effect. Uh, it, you know, we saw uh, plenty of players, Jonathan Chichu, uh, Devin Setaguchi, and then obviously, you know, Kevin LeBanc, uh, all of them, you know, benefiting from the passing genius that is Joe Thornton. And of course, with him kind of getting older and of course, not even being with the team anymore, uh, that, uh, maybe he has kind of played with LeBanc's head just a little bit there. So, uh, they, yeah, I'm yeah. sure they had quite a bit of uh, good chemistry that he just can't seem to find with, uh, the likes of. You know, a Tomas Hurdle or a Kevin. I'm sorry, Kevin Lemay. Yeah, a, uh, Logan it, it wasn't just Thornton's playmaking ability either. It was his off ice banter and True. and how he can get not like under people's skin, but kind of a good kick in the rear. And I think Kevin LeBanc is one of those players that constantly needs that kick in the rear. And Joe Thornton was known to give that out to anybody that had ears. So I think um, I think that was a big part of it. Is is there wasn't somebody constantly on him anymore, and he kind of 
lackadaisical and got away with it. And then it just snowballed from there. Kind of like, you know, when you procrastinate writing a paper and you just keep doing it and you get away with it, you're just going to get worse and worse and worse. Uh, speaking of kicking the rear, um, Nicholas Egan says Meyer has been in so many trade talks recently that I feel like they have to trade him now. Could also be a kick in the rear for him to be better next year. Um, yeah, good, good observation there from Nicholas. Hey, um, why don't we do roll call now? We'll take a few more of the comments here. Um, so why don't you guys let us know uh, where you are uh, watching us from and what, Aaron, what, if you made a trade, what would the trade be or what do you want to ask them to do? Uh, let's say, do you think the Sharks are done making moves? Okay. Do you feel the Sharks are done making moves? So go ahead and let us know. That'll be our, our roll call. Uh, for this session, if you will. <laughs> uh, Nick W has a question too, Aaron. He says, do you think playoffs are possible realistically? I'm going to answer this first. And you can think about it for a second. Okay. Uh, yes, I think playoffs are possible. I thought playoffs were possible even last season. They just choked and, and, and stank, to be honest with you. Um, I, I think as long as you got guys like Burns and Carlson, uh, as long as they kind of return, not 100%, return to form. Okay. Just get back. I think they're going to outscore their last season's pace, if you will, in the season before that. I think they're going to outscore that this season. I'm, I'm optimistic. I always am. But I don't. I know that they're declining, obviously. Um, any player above 30 years old is on the decline. It doesn't mean that they're terrible. It just means they're not going to be uh, quite as efficient. Or they're going to have to work just a little bit harder to be that efficient uh, on the ice or uh, you know, generating points and, and whatnot. So I just think that, you know... I, there's still some pretty good names in this team that have a lot of good talent. And I just don't think that they're just rolling over. I don't think that they're digging their own grave. I think that they're prideful guys that want to go out there. They want to win. They want to play hard for their team. They want to represent their team. Well. Um, so I, I don't know. I still think that there's guys that underperformed that they just need to come back to center. And if they did that, this team would be uh, just uh, much more phenomenal than they were in the last two seasons. So that's kind of where my stance is. I think a lot of it still has to do with the blue line. I think defensively they shore up a little bit more. You know, Doug, I'm sorry, uh, Doug had mentioned that Bob Bugner will have the benefit of, you know, having a preseason, having uh, the the development camp, um, having the rookie camp and everything else for, for all those guys, um, having, you know, his, his, um, his staff with him the entire time. He didn't have the whole staff there, if you remember, right? His assistant coach wasn't there for like half the season. So I, I think there's a lot of things just being back in San Jose is another one of them. I think there's a lot of things, you know, that are going to come together this season that just weren't there last season. They didn't get off to a good start and it all just snowballed. Uh, once you're already down so far in the very beginning of the season, you kind of look at your record and go, well, <laughs> guess we're done. So I think, you know, that kind of not being on their minds, those two things, I think just the blue line and the, the start of the season is going to be enough to kind of help the, the Sharks along and I do think that they're going to be able to contend. Someone else had made the uh, the observation that it's going to be Vegas and Edmonton one two. Third spot is wide open. I don't know. You disagree maybe with Edmonton? That's fine. But that's I, I still I do think he's got a point there. That even if you say Edmonton's a lock, that third spot is kind of wide open. Do you agree with that at least? Absolutely. I, I think it's no secret that the Pacific Division is the the weakest division out of all four of them right now. Um, it would have been even worse if Arizona was in it. So it's unfortunate. I'm really sad that they left. I, I miss, I miss them already. I miss them. It's an easy win that should have been or should be. Um, anyway, I, I do think the sharks are a playoff team. I think you said it earlier, or you just said it right now that last year they were close. I mean, at one point they were only one or two points out of a, out of a position. And then they just kind of, I don't know, pooped themselves and, and <laughs> couldn't, couldn't, couldn't get a win to save their lives. So, um, I think, uh, they put together some good hockey. I think they were kind of feeling confident and then it just kind of snowballed and went bad. So, um, they ended up obviously not making playoffs. And I was also kind of mad that they did have that one win at the end of the season. Cause that made the difference between what fifth overall and seventh overall. <laughs> not that it mattered cause I wanted to get Eklund, but, um, I do think this team is much better already than last year's team. I think there's a little bit more experience, a little bit more depth, which is more important. Um, I think that's what the Sharks lacked severely in the last season, uh, maybe the last two seasons, is if any of those players go out, any of the top six go out, you have nobody to replace them. Nobody's going to be able to step in there. So I think they have a better job of of um, 
getting guys that stay healthy, Cogliano and even Bonino stays fairly healthy. Um, I think that's good. Um, someone asked if we think Patrick Marlowe is going to get back. Uh, Melissa J, do you think we get Patty back? I don't think so. I think I think the Sharks kind of had Patty to kind of get the record, and I don't think they're going to bring him back. I don't know if any team is going to sign him or if he even wants to really go to some other teams. Um, I mean, he's got, what, four sons uh, all in school. That's going to be hard to either leave them here while they're in school or to pack them up and move them again. Um, that was a big deal when they moved to Canada. So I don't know. I don't know what team is going to want him. I want to see him play. I want, I want to see him win a cup. So it would be great if he could sign for the league minimum at a team that uh, is a good contender. Like what if he went to Colorado? Right. Um, I think, um, I think that'd be amazing, but I just don't know if it's going to be realistic. So I don't know. And I don't really want to see him back on the sharks. I don't know if you do. I don't know how you feel about it. I'm kind of, um, I don't want to say just like I'm over Patty, but like at the same time, yeah, I, I kind of I'm, I'm ready to like pass at this point. You know, I think we've got um, guys that have had a couple years of experience now uh, that could use more. Right. I think we've got a couple guys that maybe they're ready to break in um, for Patty, all Patty's speed and whatnot. I don't think that that's enough anymore to say, hey, let's let's resign Patrick Marlowe. Uh, the only reason I would is if we were, let's say we made that trade. Okay, we were talking about earlier. We make that trade, Kevin LeBanc and Shimmick out for somebody in. That somebody, whoever it is, is getting paid you know, a lot, seven, eight million or whatever it is. Again, maybe not the best contract, but let's say that he's um, you know, two years left, something like that, okay? Uh, whoever that may be. Um, if that puts us right up against the cap and we need another a roster player and we can really only afford league minimum, sure, it makes sense then. Bring Patty back. Um, I think you break his his game played streak um, because I don't think you play him right away. I think you play him when you got an injury or something like that. But I don't know. I just don't see the Sharks bringing Patty back. Uh, it's just, for me, it just doesn't make sense anymore. I think last season it made perfect sense. You know, again they were uh, kind of more up against the cap. They needed it, you know, to keep the 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 next signing at like a lower dollar amount. Okay, fine, makes sense. But I don't know. I just think that. I think we're kind of over Patrick Marlowe, at least you and me. I think when I say yeah. we, I don't necessarily mean speaking I mean, sharks last year. It was a bright spot on a dark season. So I sure. think it was, it made sense to have him back. Uh, Jeremy said he did nothing for us last season by Patty. I, I kind of agree. Like I, I hate to say it, but there's some games where I watched and I'm like, Oh man, he usually, he usually is faster than that. Or he beats the guy and he didn't, or he just, generally does a better play and didn't and he just looked out of place and like i i just don't see him lasting in the nhl anymore i i hate to say it because there's going to be a young guy that's literally half his age that is going to be able to step into his shoes and, and do more than what he's doing right now uh and probably even slightly cheaper so um unfortunately i think it's just it's time it's time father yeah. time has caught up with patty i don't know about jumbo i don't know what his what he's planning on doing. Not that he's coming back to the Sharks, but um, I could see him maybe doing one more year in Toronto again because they loved him so much. <laughs> Julio does not like us. One more <laughs> year for Patty. Come on. <laughs> oh, man. You know, I think the one more year for Patty was last year, buddy. Um, I don't know. I, I'm, uh, I, I love the guy, and I love everything he's done for the Sharks and, and for the organization and for the city. Yeah. Um, but I just – I think – everybody's got to retire at some point and maybe this is just time for him. And you know me and you know us, uh, we've pushed for to have, I've pushed to have Patty back, uh, the last season, the Latin season before that. So, you know, it makes sense. It makes sense. Let's do it. Uh, but I don't know. I think just, <laughs> I think at this point, I think it's time to go out gracefully, just retire. Um, unless you, you think you can sign with a contender, like, like Aaron said, you can get, get on Colorado. They did it with Bork. Why not? You know, <laughs> Take the old guys that haven't won a cup, put them on a good team. Come on, Colorado, let's do it. I'll root for Colorado if uh, if the Sharks get eliminated, so why not? <laughs> um, oh, Patrick. Hey, yeah, thanks, Patrick. Did Paul lose weight? Yes, actually, I did. <laughs> Paul's looking thin. Or it's the camera. No, it's not the camera. No, the camera adds weight, buddy. But yes, I did lose some weight. Thank you for for noticing. I appreciate that. This my uh, my figure. Uh, there you go. Uh, <laughs> uh, Melissa actually agrees with us, Aaron. She says, think it's Paul, time for, uh, for Patty Paul, to retire. I think it's time for you to get a new shirt. This one? Yeah. Okay. I'll, I mean, I get it for free. 
Anything else you want to talk about here? Maybe you could segue into that one. Oh, you want me to segue into that one? Jesus. Into the shirts? Jesus. The shirts that we have on the finfactor.com is these the shirts you're talking about? Yes. Do you think I need one from the inventory that we have I think, through the I website? Think, Let I think me you tell you something, Aaron. You, if I was paying for my shirt, which I won't, and if I was one of these people in the chat section over here, I would be happy to know that we're doing a 30% off all inventory sale. There it is. Store wide. Support the Fin Factor. We appreciate uh, all the support you guys can give us. This is, again, a way to do that. But we've decided we're slashing prices. So there you go. 30% off store wide. Premium shirts are $17.50. Wow. Are we, is that right? Are we charging just $17.50? That's a steal. May as well give them away. Snapback hats, $21. Bucks. Sticker packs, now just $3.50. Everything is in stock. So no worries about you know, wanting something and it not being there, whatever else. Look, we got the black, we got the teal, we got the, the gray, we got the women's uh, cut. looks really good. And then we got the hats, of course. Uh, they're uh, cleaner than mine, so uh, feel free to pick one of those up. It'll come in a nice uh, little bag and everything. And, of course, the stickers, they go so well on toasters, <laughs> as everyone does know. So the finfactor.com, the prices are uh, as marked. There's no coupon code, no uh, hoops to jump through. You don't have to compliment anybody. Just go over there. Uh, throw us your support and get something for it. So there you go. <laughs> Took uh, a little bit of goading there, huh? You, uh, you want to segue into that one? <laughs> they like slap you across the face if I was next to you. Good luck. Get on with it. Thanks, Jim. Yes, Aaron. Get on with it. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's talk about real briefly because it keeps coming up in the comments. Eichel. Jack Eichel. <laughs> We're not getting Jack Eichel. The Sharks are not getting Jack Eichel. I don't want them to get Jack Eichel. Apparently, the price is sky high for Jack Eichel. All these people that want the Sharks to tank and to rebuild want the Sharks to go after Jack Eichel, which doesn't make <laughs> sense because that would mean probably trading Eklund, Bortolo, Merkley, a first-round pick, everything. They're going to ask for the whole the, the moon. So, yep. no, I, I don't think it's worth it uh, for a guy who always gets hurt and uh, – Buffalo won't even release his medical records. That's just scary. Yeah. <laughs> like here, you want to buy a house? It's fine. You can have <laughs> it. It's $5 million. No, you can't look at it. Just, just pay me and take it. Anyway, I, I think it's a terrible idea. I don't think I realistically, I don't think the sharks are going to do it. I don't think they should do it. And I'm sick of talking about Jack Eichel because I, 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 I swear Everyone wants Doug Wilson to be fired because he doesn't do anything. Then he goes out and signs three guys in one day. And then they're like, those are the guys. That's it. That's going to win us a cup. It's like, dear. No, we, nobody has patience in this world anymore. Nobody, everyone has immediate gratification with Twitter and everything else. And you see it in the other team, like, okay, there's a trade for um, Bushnevich. You see that Pavel Bushnevich mm -hmm. from the Rangers, which is bizarre, got traded to, um, who was it? Philly? I'm not sure. I, I saw that he got moved. Anyway, uh, it was only for a second round pick. And everyone's like, why didn't the Sharks move that? Doug Wilson should be fired. He traded <laughs> a second rounder for Aiden Hill. Why didn't they why didn't they trade for him? Like, well, first of all, there, you know, certain GMs have have uh relationships with one another. Um, I don't know if one is fleecing the other or what, but that was a severely underpaid. I don't think they were shopping Bushnevich around saying, hey, I'll take a second rounder. Anyone? Anyone? No? All right. Sorry. I'll just deal with Philly instead. It's like, or St. Louis. Sorry, St. Louis. Thank you, the bearded beanie. Um, I, I, there was another trade, too. Like, uh, let's talk about Fleury. This, this is just baffles my mind. Marc-Andre Fleury wins the Vezina Trophy. He gets traded to Chicago for a bag of pucks named something minor league player unreal when's the Vezina gets traded he didn't even find out about it until someone on twitter told him about it he found it on twitter they didn't even call him vegas is getting such a bad rap right now around the league uh there was one guy that they traded that he was getting married the next day and got traded there was another guy whose no trade clause kicked in the next day and they traded him there's another one i think it was schmidt who wanted a no trade clause. And they said, no, you are a future. We don't, we'll never trade you. We're not going to give you no trade clause. No reason they traded him. Uh, 
I don't think Gallant deserved to get fired when he did. It's not like they were, I don't know. I They're getting a bad rep that they're going to have a hard time signing. In a couple years, they're going to have a real hard time signing players as free agents because nobody's going to want to play there. They're all getting treated like dirt. Meanwhile, we have Doug Wilson, who treats people with respect, like gentlemen, gives them <laughs> rewards, says, hey, LeBanc, do me a solid, sign for a million bucks this year, and I'll take care of you the next four years. Boom, done. Hey, Joner, you've been great. You got us to the finals. We're going to sign you to an extension. Hey, sorry, we're going to have multiple conversations over this, but we're going to buy you out, and we still think you're a very good goalie in this league. We just can't afford it right now. I'm sure you're going to find somebody. We'll give you a very good recommendation. Boom. You signed for Philadelphia for $2 million. Doug Wilson versus other people. And you and I have met Doug Wilson several times. He is a professional. He is, he very much takes care of his own. And uh, he's a nice guy. He's a, he's a genuinely nice guy. He's, he's not a jerk. I, I got to watch what I say. So I don't blurt out some bad words here, but um, <laughs> he, he's a very nice guy who is very professional and one of the things that he always talks about is uh, a few things, actually, is respect. And he likes players with good character. Um, you saw the Sharks did not sign D'Angelo. Um, there's a couple other players out there that are really like Carolina just signed D'Angelo. And you should see the ratio that's getting hit with on Twitter because everyone's like, what are you doing? And and their their GM is like, oh, what? We asked people and nobody had anything bad to say about him. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Did you ask the guy that he punched in the locker room? I don't think so. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Nick. Let it out, Aaron. Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> Go ahead. Rant over. Slash and rant. Uh, you know what? Not and rant because I'm going to kind of piggyback on something you had talked about there. People that were upset with some of the, the signings today. Um, and I think you're right, you know, uh, looking at, oh, you know, he's 33 years old or, you know, whatever the case may be. There's not a whole lot of 24 year old superstar stud UFAs out there. I don't know if people understand that. Uh, usually the young talent is uh, are, they're restricted free agents. So their rights are owned by the team and you'd have to trade for that player. Um, and usually they're not going to let that guy go to unrestricted free agency because that means they got nothing for him and other teams would pick that guy up, at, you know, in a heartbeat, right? So, in terms of free agency, you don't generally have the superstar studs that are young available via free agency. That's just not you don't typically see that, right? So, I don't know. I, I don't know what people are expecting necessarily. I hope maybe they were thinking of of uh, you know more trades or something like that that he could have made. But uh, for for him to sign the guys that he did, I think free agency is a time where you kind of sign those character guys, those. Those uh, fill in those gas, fill in those holes. You'll get those studs that are out there, but that's usually for a team that's got a lot of cap space that wants to add, you know, a, a star player uh, to kind of make that push because they were close last season and we can get there, right? Um, generally, that's kind of where you see that. But I think for the Sharks, um, these kind of signings where they're just kind of shoring up the bottom six, and that's what he said going into this. He said, "I want a third line center, probably a veteran winger to help out the the fourth line guys." And I need another goaltender, right? After they had got Aiden Hill, actually, even before they got Aiden Hill, he said we want to get uh, sure up our goaltending situation, which a lot of people thought that meant okay, we got Aiden Hill, great. Uh, but then others were saying no, it's uh, Martin Jones buyout. And we're going to be completely different tandem, right? So I mean, and that's exactly what he set out to do, and that's exactly what he did. So in terms of whether or not Doug Wilson's a good GM, bad GM, he had a plan, he stuck to that plan, and he was able to execute that plan. So I don't know. I, I have no problem with the signings today. I think he's done a great job, um, accomplished everything he set out to do. I think um, much like other folks that were talking in here and our roll call, a lot of them were saying, you know, I don't think he's done yet. I think I see another trade coming. And of course, everybody has their, their magic crystal ball out trying to uh, figure out what that trade might be and who it might be with. But I do think that there's still one more thing uh, that the Sharks could do at least to make them uh, you know, back into like playoff contention to put them back into that conversation. And I think that, you know, moving Shimmick, as you had said, pairing him up with the likes of a Timo Meyer or a Kevin LeBanc and bringing in somebody preferably on the right wing um, who can play in that top six is really going to help this team kind of take that next step. Uh, so I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Hopefully something else is on the horizon here. If not, 
we'll see how the season plays out and it's just going to be a fun conversation with us and you guys, of course. So uh, either way, um, we're always going to be here for you guys and just enjoying this conversation when the Sharks are doing well, when the Sharks are not, we'll be right here for you. So um, Tony D was the one who got punched, Jumbo Rooster said. <laughs> oh, right. There you go. There, I, I'm sure was, he deserved it. Their goalie, I forgot, I think it was their backup goalie. They got in a fight in the yeah. locker room because he said something to him. Yeah. Um, because I think it was when it was obviously it was the last game that he had played for the Rangers. He got burned bad on defense. D'Angelo did and then scored a goal. They scored a goal. And so everyone was blaming D'Angelo. And I think he took it out on the goalie for letting them score. So he got punched in the face because that's how Mother Russia deals with it. <laughs> it was a Russian Russian goalie. Um, there was a question here. Where to go? Uh, it is uh, from Jeremy. How do you think EK65 is going to be this season? I think, you know, there are some games uh, last season. I feel like there is at least six to ten points that were left on the board because uh, Carlson made some great moves and an awesome pass and the Sharks couldn't finish. So I think he's going to have a bounce back season. I'm hoping he stays healthy. Uh, I'd like to say he'll stay healthy, but you can never really guess that, especially with a guy with his history. So um, I'm hoping he comes into training camp and the season ready to go because that's kind of his MO is that he's never ready and he always needs a good week or two to get into the groove of things. Um, I would like it if he oh, maybe only took three games to get into the groove instead of 10 games to get in the groove. So um i'm hoping uh i'm hoping he he's ready to go and i think if the sharks have some uh, like i think we talked about it earlier today uh, a right winger like a, a good scoring right winger um in the top six i think they're going to be doing much better um and i'm hoping the power play gets worked over so that they start scoring more goals and and be a more scoring team i think the defense and i think the goaltending is going to be much better than last year. I mean, it has to be. And and we'll know. Like, think about it this way. If if the goaltending is the exact same, then we know it's not the goaltending that's the problem. So what do you think? What do you think about well, Carlson? So before I talk about Carlson, I think that um, just the fact that Bob is going to have that time with his team and that time with his team in San Jose – I think that alone is going to change the defense in terms of how much they can gel and how much they uh, absorb that system and how well they play to that system. I think that a lot of that had to do with the start that they had. Um, so I think, hope, that you're going to see better numbers from the goaltending, not just because the goalies are better, but because I think the defense is going to benefit. Well, I didn't say the defense. I'm sorry. The team defense. The whole squad, I think they're going to benefit from having that time uh, to kind of understand the system better, work it on the ice, because you can go X's and O's, but until you get on the ice and actually do it, um, that's how you learn it, right? So uh, I, I think that they're going to be in a much better position this season just from that standpoint. So um, I don't want to say that it's if, if the numbers are better for Aiden Hill and for James Reimer, that it's necessarily because Jones was the problem. <laughs> Um, but I, I do think that there's a lot that kind of goes into that to make all of that work. And I think, like I said, uh, Bob's system being able to be implemented earlier is probably going to be a, a big part of that. Hopefully is a big part of that. Hopefully we see the numbers for the Sharks goaltending, uh, go down. I don't care who's at fault. I just want to see it get better. <laughs> um, <laughs> and now as far as EK 65, again, I'm ever the optimist. So I've, I, again, I'm, I'm in this state of mind where again, if the Sharks have, all the, the preseason and the training camps and all these other things to kind of help everybody out. I feel like maybe EK 65 will kind of iron out some of that, um, that poor early starts um, during all that period. So we'll kind of see how it goes. I would love to see him bounce back. I know he's a better player than what we've seen, especially in the last like two seasons. I know he's a better player than that. Um, people love to jump on the train of, Oh, he's getting old. He's over the hill. Um, he's, you know, on the decline. Uh, I, I don't necessarily believe that not to the point where he just all of a sudden goes from being 
you know, a superstar in the league to just tank. Right. I just, I, I can't believe that. I can't believe that he just falls off a cliff like that. So I think a lot of that has to do with all the things I've already talked about. So with, with all the kind of coming back to a sense of normalcy, I'm hoping that his game comes back to normal Eric Carlson. And we've seen what Eric Carlson can do. Um, there was that stretch of 14 games. I think he had 20 something points, whatever it was. I mean, that's just insane. That's absolutely ridiculous. Cause we're not even talking about a forward. We're talking about a blue liner and his, his point per game production was almost two times, right? Two X, however many games you got double that. And that's how many points you got. It was, it was almost that. So, um, I don't know. I, I think he's going to bounce back. I, I said that last season too, and I was wrong, but I'm ever the optimist. I think he's going to bounce back. I hope he does. The Sharks certainly need him to. Uh, they need him and they need Brent Burns um, to, to kind of drive that offense forward. But, you know, again, if guys like Eklund are there, I think you're absolutely right. If if a guy like Eklund who buries the puck, um, if Kevin LeBanc wakes up and starts burying it, if Timo Meyer starts driving the net, gains his confidence back and starts burying it, yeah, a lot of those passes that he made that they didn't make the finish, all of a sudden he's got a whole bunch of assists. So I don't know who you put the blame on there. Do you blame EK65 because he wasn't generating points because they weren't scoring? Or do you blame the guys that weren't scoring when he was setting them up? See, I mean, we watch the game and we see him make these incredible plays so uh, so often, and the guys he gives it to are just not finishing. So I have a hard time blaming him for that. So, um, yeah, I know. I think uh, – I think we're, they're all around going to be better this season. And uh, if not, I don't know. I don't know what we're going to do. Yeah. <laughs> when when uh, Carlson went on that tear, the Sharks' depth was unreal. I mean, that's when we had an actual third line where Don Squay was on the third line. And and so many so many good players. Pavelski was playing. So there's a lot of guys who could finish and were finishing that season. I mean, that was one of the highest scoring Sharks teams in a long time. So it made sense. Um that he was able to make those passes and then people able to bury it. Um, I think, uh, yeah, I think someone just said he was a diva too. They think that, that, uh, that Carlson's a diva. Yeah. It, it's kind of, uh, there it is. Angelo. He acts like a diva. I don't know, man. I think, uh, he's kind of earned that right based on what he's done in this, in the past. So I don't think he's a diva per se, but, um, th- would that just mean he's cocky kind of, yeah, probably. Whatever. <laughs> I don't know. All right. Well, you know what? I think we are uh, we're, we're way over time. So uh, I, I want to say thank you to all the people in the comment section uh, for hanging out with us this long. We, we've had a pretty solid viewership pretty much the entire stream. So we uh, appreciate that you guys are sticking with us. We appreciate all the comments you guys are throwing in there. And if anybody happened to take advantage of that 30% off sale. We appreciate your support as well. Please remember the finfactor.com 30% off site wide. We're not sure how long we'll be doing it. Uh, so please go ahead and stop by and pick up either a shirt or a hat or some stickers, uh, anything for your toaster if you want, I guess. Uh, and, and we'll, uh, obviously be very appreciative of that. Also remember, uh, for Venmo, if you happen to do that, support the show that way, uh, at the fin factor through Venmo. Um, if you put a comment there, We'll try to remember to read it off for the next show. Uh, and obviously for the super chat and whatnot, we'll uh, highlight the comment there as well. And we can read that off. So if there's something that's burning on your brain and you can't wait for us to answer it, feel free to, to do that. And we'll be sure to get to it. Um, uh, got a comment here from Nick. Yeah. Asking if you mean the fantasy league, I was going to announce it when Paul was done here. So yes, you are in the league. I have not set it up yet. I will do it. Um, maybe I'll get to it tonight. It's kind of late, but uh, late for me here, but, I, uh, if you would like to join the league, please email us at the at gmail.com and let me know that you want in and I'll send you the invite. So, you know what? I'll do it tonight. I'll get the setup tonight and you'll get the email invite tonight. Right now, I think there's three people that emailed. So there's, there's still, uh, nine spots left. Bold move cotton. I don't know if he's actually going to get to it tonight or not. We'll see. Uh, you guys let me know. Okay. <laughs> All right. Hey, again, thank you guys so much. This stuff is so much fun for us. I really enjoy being able to kind of think on my toes when you guys give us the comments. It helps us out. Um, we really do love doing it with you guys. Uh, please make sure, by the way, the, the likes are all great and the subscribing is awesome. For, well, subscribing is good for you. Um, but, you know, the, the other thing I want to say is please be sure to share uh, with your friends. 
that's kind of how we grow. That's kind of how we get some more people in the comment section talking with us, giving us all these good suggestions, giving us all these good questions that we get to answer for you guys. The more, you know, there you go. Um, so yeah, please more than anything else, if you can share us by any of the socials, be it on, you know, grabbing a YouTube link and sharing it with a friend or doing it through Twitter, uh, Facebook, whatever it is, uh, that would be awesome. We would absolutely appreciate that. And Aaron, do you have anything else you wanted to say there? You got your arm up. Nope. That's it. Oh, okay. Sorry. Call let me teach. Okay. Uh, I guess that does it. So again, oh wait, how often do you guys stream? Sorry. We should probably answer that question. You know, what we're going to do is when the season starts, we were typically doing once a week, Aaron. Um, well, we were doing a live on Sunday night and then we'd record an episode after the live that would come out on either Monday or Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, I think we're going to go back to that format. This last season was a little different because the way that the schedule is set up and everything, we did a live after every series. Um, but we'll go back to the Sunday night live. And depending on super producer Jason's tolerance to us, if it'll come out on Monday or Tuesday. Yeah. And you know, Alex, um, you don't have to worry so much about trying to figure out when we stream. All you have to do is hit that subscribe button and the notification bell, and then we'll tell you. So it makes it a lot easier. So again, make it easier on yourself. Smash that button right down there. And uh, we, we don't give you a bunch of junk. We honestly only tell you when we're actually doing something and we don't do like all kinds of random videos and stuff. We, we keep it uh, concise and we keep it, uh, I say concise and we were going for an hour and 15. Uh, but anyways, yeah, just go ahead and hit that sub button. Okay, uh, again, thank you guys so much. We appreciate uh, all your support. So for Super Producer Jason, I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. And we will see you guys sometime soon. Sometime. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, check out our other content, especially interviews. You can interact with us directly through social media at The Fin Factor and on Instagram at Fin Factor. And don't forget to join our live streams on YouTube. Visit our website at TheFinFactor.com where you'll find all of our episodes as videos or podcasts. You'll also find our exclusive merchandise to help support our show.